All right, so welcome back out to my driveway. We just got our shipment in about 1200 bucks worth of steel. So we got all we need to get started on this trailer build. So let's go take a quick peek at what all I ordered, and then we can get cracking on this thing. So here's our stack of steel. Let's look at what we got. We got two six inch C channel, two five inch C channel, six three inch C channel, and then we got a couple just standard angle iron. So this would be pretty much what we need to build out the entire deck and the tongue and everything. And hypothetically, we have enough stuff here to get this trailer kind of moving as a trailer. So, our first order of business is probably going to be moving all of these three inch channels off over to the cutting station I have set up. And then we can start planning out how we're modifying everything else to fit properly. Now I did model this in a 3D program but that just kind of gets you most of the way there. We've still got to figure out some finer details in the real world. So anyways, I'm going to get these pieces moved on over and then we'll see what we're working with. All right, so currently this is what we got set up. We've got the rails set up out here. Uh, there's more than one way to set up a trailer. Most people go for the rule of some of 60-40, but if you know exactly what you're going to utilize your trailer for, there is a much more accurate way to do that. Uh, there's a bunch of formulas that you can find online for calculating tongue weight versus trailer weight, whether you have a tongue box or whatnot, but essentially what I'm going to do is set it up for pretty much the maximum tailback that I feel safe cruising around town in. So, basically, from all the way in the back to the tire up here, we're about six foot four inches behind the tire. So that's a pretty healthy tailback, but I think we should be perfectly fine with what we're doing. So next, as you can see, I got a 2x6 strapped in between the tires just to keep that certain space. You want to have at least some room so if you uh, destroy a tire, things don't blow up on you and take out the second tire. That pretty much means that our entire beam, which is 20 feet, five inches. I don't feel like cutting it exactly to 20 foot. So we'll deal with an extra five inches. But roughly center, uh, the front axle is basically eight inches forward of kind of what the center of the beam should be plus that extra five inches that I just shoved up front. So, pretty rough thought there, but since I already put that all in the computer, I kind of know that that does indeed work. And as you can see, it sits pretty uh, balanced when it's flat on the axles, so we're not unbalanced, so we're at a good starting point. Now, 
since this thing might see some tilt action, I'm going to kind of, I don't know what you'd call that, cut down the rear so it has more of an angle to set on the ground. But, yeah. Let's just take a little closer peek at that. All right, so hopefully you can see all this. Right up here, you're gonna see we came in inch and a half and drew a line. That's where I'm going to remove this top square. So when we grab one of the cross members and put it up there, it can be completely flush with the rest of this cross member. And then down here, you might be able to faintly see it. We came down the three inches of the cross member, then out to 24 inches and just kind of slice that right there. So what that means, I'm going to have to grab the angle grinder, start slicing away on that. It's like chances are it would work with plasma cutter, but the angle grinder, although it takes a heck of a lot longer, leaves a little bit of a straighter finished edge and that will probably be a lot better for welding. So, I guess I'm going to start tackling that and then maybe up at the uh, front. I will drill a couple holes for the bump stops to sit. That way we know exactly where our frame section is going, where the bump stops are, and once we got those holes in there, we don't have to worry about trying to drill upside down or anything weird. So that's the plan for this next bit. Cut a couple slices, drill a couple holes, and go from there. So we got that section trimmed up, kind of bent over where it needs to be. So we're going to come in with a MIG and tack a couple spots to keep it from falling apart. And then we can burn it in with the TIG later. So that's going to be a common theme throughout this entire trailer. We'll get the MIG running to tack most of the items to hold it together. And then we'll put the heavy burn in with the TIG since our MIG is actually a pretty small little piece of equipment. So I'll put a couple zaps in here and then we'll be able to keep rolling. Now I'll just have to do that on the other side. And we'll have the first step of difficulty taken care of. Then we can really just start grabbing crossbars and zapping them in. That'll be nice. All right, so we got those two sections finished off, welded up, ready to fly. And then we got our little bump stops. You see we got a bump stop there, bump stop there. Those are gonna sit on the axle while we do the rest of our figuring of where things go. So. Now that we got that, I need to grab a couple lengths of C-channel and some ratchet straps. And then we'll ratchet this thing together and we'll see where we need to adjust and straighten up. All 
right, so I got that nicely tigged in. This looked pretty good, but unfortunately, I was hoping to get more done, but we are just battling with some rainstorms, as you can tell by a little bit of rust going on here. So I've got to wrap some things up, wait that out, and hopefully get moving on to the rest of the stuff here soon. Anyways, thanks for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you're subscribed so you can see how this thing continues. Anyways, thanks again. Later.